Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining our Authentic Stories in Slugs and Tech um, round two. Um, my name is Sarah um, Davidson. I am currently a talent sourcer at Microsoft via Search Wizards. And I previously, well, let me first start. I graduated from UC Santa Cruz back in 2019. I was a business management economics major. And similar to, I feel like how we all felt before we graduated, um, I had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, it actually started, my, I felt like I started really late in my career journey. I didn't start until like my junior spring quarter when everyone was like, oh, you got to get internships so you can get a full-time job. And this is where I met this recruiter at the career fair. So you guys use the career resources. Um, it's definitely helpful. Um, I met this recruiter, started my first internship with Ross Dress for Less, and then kind of realized that wasn't where I wanted to go. And then moved into knowing that I wanted to become a recruiter. And then all senior year, I looked into how to get into recruitment, um, where then after I graduated, I landed my first role at Google via Nelson Staffing. I held three positions there, um, an online candidate specialist, on-site candidate specialist, and a recruiter coordinator. And now currently a technical talent talent sourcer, but I love the realm of talent. I love helping people um, just like discover their potential and find them the right fit. So I'm super excited to be here. I'm super open. So feel free to ask me questions and ask all the panelists questions like we're here for you. So I'll bring along to my co-host, Lisa. Oh, thanks, Sarah. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm also a graduate of UCSC 2019. I graduated a little bit early. So um, after graduating, I went to Taiwan to teach English. Um, when I was at UCSC, I was a psychology major, education minor, and I thought that I wanted to pursue teaching after graduation. Um, but then actually after experiencing teaching, I realized it wasn't quite for me. Um, I still love working with students, but couldn't really do the teaching. Um, so that's when I pivoted careers into recruiting and I, was, I became a recruiting coordinator at Amazon for the Alexa and Devices Org. Um, that was back in 2019. And then this year, I actually recently um, joined the University Operations Org at Amazon as a program coordinator. Um, and I feel like I'm just in my dream role right now, working with the university population, which is what I've been wanting to do, and getting really involved in program management. Um, and yeah, super excited to be here, excited uh, to introduce the rest of our panelists so you can hear everyone's stories. Why don't we start with Aldi, if you feel comfortable. Hey guys, uh, my name is Adi. I studied comp sci for four years, got my bachelor's degree uh, when I graduated in spring of 2019. Um, along the way, I had two internships at this ERP management and HCM cloud company called the Workday that really helped me land my current job at Nordstrom. And for them, I did some DevOps work. I did some web development work as well for their platform called Workday Community, which is like a, you can think of it as like a giant discussion and forum place for users of Workday to sort of come together, ask questions, post guides and stuff like that. It's like Reddit, but for, for Workday. Um, and right now I'm a software engineer at Nordstrom. I work within uh, three different spaces actually. So I'm working in in-store digital tech. I'm working on point of sale, pretty cool because Nordstrom builds point of sale in-house. Um, and I'm also uh, working on the online space. So my team owns nordstrom.com slash stores. Thank you, Audie. Um, we can move over to Lucy. Okay, I was hoping that you would call me because Audie, I am so excited to hear that you're at Nordstrom. That was actually my second job ever working as a sales associate way back when I was in college. Um, and also love that you're in the workday space because that's a little bit of the world that I live in now. So that's really cool. Um, hi everyone, so good to meet you. I'm Lucy and um, I graduated from UC Santa Cruz back in 2015. So I do think I'm the oldest one out of this panel. I looked all of y'all up. <laughs> um, but born and raised in San Francisco, currently living out here in Denver. Um, but back when I was in Santa Cruz, I was a part of College 8 and now I hear it's Rachel Carson. So that probably dates me a little bit. <laughs> Um, so I guess I'll just bring you guys a little bit through my history. Um, don't want to give you my whole life story because that's going to be way too long. But when I was in your position, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, so I'll be as honest as I can about my experience, hoping that you guys can take something away from it and hoping that it resonates with you. 
but I was always super, super envious of people who knew exactly what they wanted to do. You know, they were so committed and driven working towards like X, Y, Z, a certain job. Um, I had no clue. I went into business management thinking that it was going to be, you know, a subject that came easily to me. And I took accounting as a prereq. Um, turns out I was a natural at it, even though I didn't think I was really good at math. Um, and naturally, like I landed a, an accounting internship and I kind of went down that path and took a full full time offer because obviously, like, why would I put myself through more interviews, right? It's like so much more work. So post college, I went straight into being a financial auditor at Armanino. It's a Bay Area firm. Um, and, you know, day in and day out, like I realized that was not the work I wanted to be doing. So I'm one of those people that falls into having to do the whole career pivot. Um, and I realized I found myself doing a lot more of the people side of things back when I was a financial auditor. I was always volunteering for things like the extracurriculars, you know, like the soft skills and campus recruiting, um, kind of hosting manager Q and A's to really empower and advocate for my peer group, right? Like all those extracurriculars. And I realized that I really just love helping people and supporting people. So very early on, I realized I had to pivot, you know, cause I didn't want to be stuck doing financial auditing for the rest of my life and suffering. So I um, got really lucky and I landed a text, uh, a role at a tech startup going into HR. So that was my first introduction into HR and in, in the tech space, which I know all of you guys are curious about. Um, I worked at Flexport and it was a really, really rapid growth company. And I can share a little bit more about that. But um, after Flexport, I ended up at Robinhood, which is where I am today. And I've been there for the last two years, I'm still in HR, um, but started off as a generalist and now kind of in the HR tech and ops system. So that's a little bit about me. Love that. Jude, do you want to go next? Uh, yeah, I'd love to. How's my audio? Is it okay? Does it sound all right? Um, hello, my name is Drew. I am actually, I am like this, I'm the same classes as like Lisa, Audi, Sarah. I started in 2015. I graduated a little early. I graduated in 2018. I was part of College 9. I think it's still College 9. Um, and I, you know, just got to make sure I'm not, I don't know how things change. Um, you know, I was a computer science major, uh, BS in computer science. It's now like CSE. So like, that's a little, I guess it dates it a little bit. It's no longer like CS, it's CSE now. Um, but yeah, so I graduated in 2018. I'm a computer science major. Um, I had one, I had two internships throughout college. Um, I had an internship on campus. It was uh, an e-support internship, uh, part of, um, the Citrus Labs at uh, UCSC. So it's kind of like, it was kind of like tech support slash like documentation work. Um, it was like my first, it was actually like my first like official job ever. Like I didn't have a job in like high school or anything. Um, but yeah, so I did, I did that um, as a freshman, like end of freshman year. Um, after that, I had an internship at IBM uh, in San Jose, which like, um, I believe it's the Silicon Valley Labs, the SVLs. Um, and I was a software developer internship intern there. I did a lot of like, really low level like they they work on this product called db2 which is like this like really low level like database program so i did a lot of like um they have this in they have this in-house language which i use but it's very like c pascal -y. it's very like whoa this is not this is not like what i learned in college but it was awesome i did a lot of coding there it was really fun um it was cool because the internship was really nice because it was like a co-op so it was like i worked Almost, I believe I worked there for eight months. I worked there from like summer all the way to like the next spring um, because I was actually graduating that year. Um, and then after after graduation, like, or like before graduation, I applied to Viva, Viva Systems, which I've been there for about, God, it's so long. I've been there for almost three years now. So yeah, two, two years and like nine months now, I think, or yeah, nine months. Oh my God. That's crazy. But yeah, I started as, I started as DevOps, like a DevOps, well, it's technically like the title was still software engineer, but like, what I actually did was, it was DevOps, which is a little different. Um, a little different than your like, I think usual, like, you know, software developer, but, um, but it was awesome. I was there, I was in that position for like a year and like a half actually. And then I was like, you know what? I think I wanna, 
I want a position change. I don't know if I want to look for a new job yet because I still like feel there's more I can do there. And there's more like I want to do there. But you know, I talked to my managers and I, I talked around and I was like, you know, I, I really want to switch jobs or switch positions kind of. So I switched from like pure DevOps to a pure backend developer. So I just do a lot of like um, backend work on their API team, which is all like, you know, all Java backend. Um, so yeah, that's what I've been doing since uh, last February, last February, 2020. I've been on that team since. Um, but yeah, that's my story. Awesome. Thanks so much for sharing, Drew. And last but not least, we have Fingna. Hey, everyone. Um, are, can you guys hear me okay? Okay. Um, so I, um, I went to UCSC and graduated December 2018. I was a business management economics major and I was um, also a first generation student. So nobody from my family has ever gone to college before. Um, I don't know if there's any first generation students here as well. Um, but uh, in college, um, I didn't really know much about what I wanted to do. So I was actually pursuing the, um, the pharmacy route because, you know, um, it, it's like typical for your family to say, um, like, we want you to go into like the medical route or the um, pharmacy route because it's, you know, it's like a typical job that they would want. So um, I ended up working, I ended up taking a lot of uh, science classes and then I started working as a pharmacy technician, I think the summer of my freshman year. And that was, that was when I was like, oh, I definitely don't want to do this. Um, so it wasn't until I joined um, uh, Delta Sigma Pi, which is a business fraternity um, at UCSC. And that was when I got really introduced into like the business world and what all the opportunities that you can take within the business, um, the business side. Um, so ultimately, um, I networked a lot um, throughout my second and third year. Um, and that's when I got to know a lot of people in the Silicon Valley. And there were so many events, I think like pre-COVID, uh, where you got to go out to like events and just meet like so many different people at like LinkedIn or Google, like any companies that throw um, undergraduate events, you guys can go to and meet so many other students that are, you know, trying to do the same things that you are. And uh, it wasn't until I, I went to a networking event for my current company now called Equinix. Um, where I landed a technology project management internship. And from there, I did a lot of like strategic, um, strategic planning within IT. Um, and that's when I got exposure within the IT, um, the IT world. Um, and uh, in the, during my internship, um, that was when I had started interviewing because interviewing starts so early, especially for um, large companies. Um, and uh, that was when I had received my offer from Microsoft and from Microsoft, um, it, the, the jobs didn't start until I think July timeframe. So when you do well at your uh, internship and your company offers um, extensions for an internship, um, you're able to continue working as an intern and then possibly get converted. So that's what happened with me and Equinix. Um, I, got, I was able to um, extend my time at Equinix until I was able to join Microsoft. And from there, I worked on um, IT systems where we were revamping our customer service um, applications and uh, migrating um, from our legacy system over to a new SaaS application. So uh, I learned a lot there, a lot in terms of like project management, um, uh, systems analysis, being able to you know, take requirements from the business side and turn that into a product that is being used by the um, by the customers um, and the and the internal team. So when I had moved over to Microsoft, um, I was a consultant uh, within the business applications um, business applications domain. So from there, what a consultant does was um, uh, I traveled every week from Monday to Thursday, sometimes from Sunday to uh, Thursday depending on you know when you want to travel. Um, and every week I would stay at a hotel and I would um, just Uber back and forth from my client's office. Um, and I just got to work with so many people that traveled from either like across the world or across the United States. And we would all work together to build like an amazing product um, and deliver that to our customers. And um, I was doing that up until the pandemic had happened. And I had realized that um, the traveling works, the traveling lifestyle wasn't really for me anymore. 
And now I'm back at Equinix um, doing program management. Awesome, thank you so much for sharing. Um, and thank you panelists for all the great introductions. Um, we'll switch gears over here and ask a few more specific questions. So just feel free to pop in um, at any time. I'll start with the first one, um, which is what did you learn or do in college that has been most useful for finding your first job? Um, and what are some of the best career resources at UCSC for finding internships? So sort of a two part question, uh, feel free to answer both parts or just one part. I don't mind kicking us off here, even though I would love to hear from the rest of the panel because you guys are more recent grads than I am. So probably a lot has changed. Um, what I did in college for kind of landing my first job, it really started with the internship. So that was my third year of being at um, UC Santa Cruz. And being an accounting major, I'm sure all of you guys are all of you guys are spread across the board in terms of what majors you guys are in, what you're studying. Um, but for me, it was accounting, right? And Meet the Firms was a really big annual event that happened where all the accounting firms in the Bay would come down to Santa Cruz and have all the reps come in. Um, so that was where it started for me. And I remember being so nervous and trying to be really prepared and polished for meeting everyone and just putting myself out there. Um, so I still remember I was like working up the courage to talk to all these people, right? Um, my biggest tip is really like, don't be so intimidated. Like at the end of the day, they're human. Um, they're, they're just like you and me, like on the other side, but recruiting is just their job, right? And they're really there to help help you navigate the space. Um, so really just be genuine and show passion and what you're trying to um, look, look for in a role, right? And just sharing a little bit more about yourself and really building a relationship um, is what it comes down to at the end of the day, at least for me. And I've been on the other side of it. Like I've been at Meet the Firms as a campus recruiter, right? Like on the other side of post-college. And I was so excited to see like all the students coming in and really wanted to learn more about them. And what stuck out to me are people who are genuinely engaged in what they're doing and being able to just speak to their passions, right? Like the work that they're doing, um, what classes were interesting to them and why. Um, it, it's very apparent when things are like rehearsed and forced. So um, that's a little bit about how I ended up with my internship is I really just went to meet the firms. Um, I'm all about being like a people connector and building relationships. So, you know, following up at the end of when you meet someone with an email or asking for their contact, asking for coffee chats um, and really just putting yourself out there. Yeah, I just want to add on. Thank you so much for sharing that, Lucy. I wanted to add on too, like it's it's really, it really is kind of putting yourself out there, right? Like I think what really helped me is if I didn't go to this career fair, you know, met this recruiter named Robin, did like my Ross Dress for Less leadership internship, I never really think I would have realized that I really wanted to become a recruiter. And then of course on that, you know, I followed, I think as you can see from a lot of our stories, like we followed our passion versus following a company, right? Like my first like two roles, I never would have dreamed I would have been in tech. Um, and so for me, it was just kind of like, I knew I want to be a recruiter and it just naturally fell in place. And I really believe that everything kind of happens for certain reasons, but with like different resources, you know, the career center has career coaches, they have different workshops, it's all about it really is all about networking and getting kind of your foot in the right door and who you're talking to and really being able to sell your story. So um, another big thing that helped me too is Fangna and I, this was Fangna's idea. We actually started Santa Cruz Women in Business. And this is kind of where we put on workshops, um, LinkedIn workshops, um, did different like company tours. And that was a really huge thing that I talked about in interviews because, you know, I think as students, sometimes we forget that um, our jobs, you know, working, I was, I worked at Ogre's, you know, if you worked at the dining hall, like these are all like real experiences, like, especially if you're managing. So don't shy away just because you didn't get an internship with a big like tech company or a big, big company doesn't mean you don't have value to hold. So just remember that, right? Because the only difference now is that 
you know, when I got these roles, it wasn't that my work value and who I changed. It's just that this company, someone gave me that shot. And I guarantee you, like, someone's going to give you that shot. So put yourself out there, network like crazy, and be genuine about it. As And we can talk about that further, but I'd love to hear from our other panelists kind of what resources and tips and tricks they used um, during school that helped them get to where they are today. Uh, yeah, if, if I can go. Um, you know, you actually brought up a really good point. Like your la the last thing you said, I was like, oh, I really resonate with that, Sarah. Like the the idea of putting yourself out there and giving yourself kind of, you know, like it's not like a oh take anything you can get, not not like that, but it's more like a, um, and that's that's not what no gym at all. But it's more yeah, it's more like a. I definitely agree with like you know, it's not about getting this big company or this big name. It's just about like getting experience and getting like, you know getting getting the experience you need from a job or you know taking you know this new opportunity to learn and stuff and like that's the big thing I would like tell myself when I if I was like yeah like if I was a little young in college is like hey like you don't need to work you don't need this big company name like oh you don't get it like that's you know it sucks but it's like hey like it's all about it's all about growing and finding what you want to do in your passion and the biggest thing I think that helped me in, in UCSC like for, for getting a job is that like we're not getting a job I guess, yeah, getting a job or just any sort of career, any sort of career advancement is honestly like it's it's kind of your peers just talking to people like, oh, what'd you do? Like, what can I do better? Like, you know, it's it's like, you know, all like, you know, like studying with your friends or or um, you're just talking like, oh, oh, I should try that, too. Or like, you know, I learned this thing like, oh, email like, you know, my friend emailed this recruiter like, oh, maybe I should try that, too. Like, that's a good that's a good thing. Maybe I should try, you know, putting myself out there like that. Like, honestly, it's just like meeting people. And like, I think that's like the biggest, like the best resources, like I think are like the students. Um, and even also like, you know, me and I, you know, uh, I knew Audi in college and, you know, we went to a bunch of career fairs together too. And even having friends to go to career fairs is like really fun to like, it's like, it's like a positive feedback loop. Um, but yeah, it's all about, I think, I think the biggest thing is like, help me is like putting yourself out there and putting yourself in a, in a situation to learn and like knowing how to learn and knowing how to grow um is really is like i think one of the best things to improve like I, I, anything really like knowing how to improve is really important and i think yeah so give yourself a shot and get out there you know like you're more than a company if you didn't get a company you know you're more than just this job application you're just you know there's students learning you know you want to get out there and learn Totally agree with you, Drew. <clears throat> Thank you for sharing that. And actually, I think I met you for the first time at one of those career fairs. Like yeah. I had heard about you through another friend and then I finally got a chance to meet you at the career fair. And I remember we were getting like swag together and stuff. That was, that was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, so I agree with your points. Networking is super important. And I learned that early on. Um, and I wasn't good at it at first, like doing the coffee chats, reaching out to people. I really wasn't good at it. it it was something that I had to get used to because it sort of took me outside of my comfort zone. Um, but the more and more I did it, I started to realize that, hey, these people, they have stories that they want to share and they're excited to tell me about their stories. So, um, you know, just talking to people is probably the biggest thing that was useful for finding my first job. Um, and Lucy, you're absolutely right. Like, uh, it, it starts with the first internship. I find it to be as like a compounding effect. My first internship helped me get my current job. Um, I, well, it helped me get my second internship, which actually was at the same company, which that helped me get my, my current job at, at Nordstrom. So it's, it's a lot to do with the people that you know and the people that you talk to. I think there's like a statistic out there somewhere that like half the hires are because of referrals or people that you know within the company. So it's really important to just be, um, always be curious, be engaged and, and reach out to people. They'll, they'll most likely be happy to talk to you. And I just and, want to, oh, go ahead, Faye. Oh, no, go ahead, Sarah. <laughs> oh, no, I just want to add on to, like, as Adi was mentioning, you guys are in your prime. Like, if you're going to reach out, trust me when I say these, like, professionals, like, they all have been in your place. Uh, you know, someone gave them that shot. Someone, you know, took that time to have a virtual coffee chat. And so trust me when I say, if you're reaching out generally, like, with a genuine reason to connect, 
people are going to respond more. You know, that's something I've heard. Um, when you're still in school, people are a lot more willing to give. So really take this time to do that, right? And also when you're coffee chatting, like don't take it like an interview, right? Like, yeah, this person, I guess, is in like the job you want to be in. But remember, this is a human being. Talk to them like you're having, like making a new friend, I like to say, because that's where a real genuine conversation strives from and like being able to follow up and keep in touch. Go ahead, Vigna, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, following up on Sarah and Addie's point, um, uh, a lot of what I did back in college was also networking as well. And when you're networking, um, don't think of it as like asking them for something, more as like getting to know them as, you know, individuals. And a lot of the people that um, I've networked with or just like met um, at like a networking event, and those could be like LinkedIn student events, or um, it could be like um, expat, like an expat woman group. Uh, where they have like panelists um, just like this and you listen to like all of their stories and these could be people that are on the VP or director level um, at like Google or DoorDash and stuff. So all of those events you guys can definitely go to and one thing that um, that really helps me out was you know you can ask these people to be your mentor if you see that um, they they are doing something that you're interested in um, and and even like if if it isn't within like work that you're interested in and it's more something personal that they're working on, you know, ask them how you can, how you can be a part of, you know, what they're doing. Um, and a lot of these uh, people that I've networked with, they actually become friends that, you know, you follow up once a month um, and it really becomes like a personal connection. Um, like one person that I met from LinkedIn, he's like the LinkedIn photographer where he takes like all the headshots for LinkedIn employees. And when we were talking, um, you know, you just start with like little conversations like, oh, where are you from? And then I found out that he lives like two blocks away from me. And sometimes we'll like see each other uh, when we're run when we're like running and taking jogs like in the road um, by our house. Um, and then we would just like catch up and stuff. And um, from there, they would introduce you to like so many other people um, because sometimes they would offer you like company tours and you could go to like Google or LinkedIn to eat for free and then they they see like their um, co-workers and then they introduce you and then you just meet so many more people and it just like goes from there and another thing is um, if you guys um, uh, do, uh, have uh, have a group of people that you guys um, are doing these um, you know, doing resumes or looking for jobs with, because when you have a group of um, friends that that you can count on and, you know, like do resumes like back and forth, it, it really helps with like bouncing ideas off of each other and um, getting comments on how you guys can make your resumes better as well. So not just networking outside, but networking at school as well. I just want to plus one that, plus one to that, because being that like, um, if you guys don't know, like Faina has been such a huge catalyst in my career. She's definitely, I think, one of the first people to really help me realize what I can hold. Um, the me three years, four years ago is not the me now. Um, so thank you, Faina, for everything. I definitely wouldn't be here without your like support. Yeah. Well, thank you, Sarah. <laughs> but going on, as we were just like talking about like careers and kind of like the resources. Um, I would love to know from our panelists, because I know this is really hard for a lot of us, like myself included, is what is the best interviewing tips that helped you? And, you know, maybe for like those in software engineer roles, like more tech roles, how did you study for the technical portion? I think you're muted. Yeah, I was muted. Yeah, I was muted. Oh, do you want to go, Lucy? I, I can go after you if you want. No, I was just going to call out that you're muted, so go right ahead. Yeah, <laughs> my bad. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess, like, you know, nothing too, I don't, I guess, like, I'll be honest, like, I don't think I'm actually, like, the best interviewer, um, like, in general, and I guess it's, like, maybe it's not good to hear from panelists, but, you know, I think we all, I think everyone can work on interviews and stuff, and, like, you know, myself definitely included. I think the one thing that's helped me a lot in terms of like a soft skill, um, at least like, at least like it, it feels like it's worked for me. Um, is that like, I think being honest, like with the interviewer, like as the interviewee to the interviewer is like really important and like being genuine and being like curious and being upfront 
Um, because it just puts a lot of walls. It puts a lot of fronts down. I think like, you know, like I think we always like want to put up a front to like, hey, I'll get all people special, I'll be more confident. And that's awesome. And that's like really good to do. Uh, because confidence is hard. Confidence is like really hard. And I think we all I think everyone struggles with confidence. Like, um, and also modesty is hard. Um, you know, so like um in terms of like a soft skill, which helps me a lot in interviews, and I and I I like I wanna I've heard like some from like you know from like at my you know, I'm not, I'm not a company now, Viva. It's like, I know people who've interviewed, I'm like friends with people who've, who've interviewed me now. So like, cause I've been there for a little while and you know, like they've, you know, like, oh, hey, like, you know, thanks for being honest. Like, thanks for like, you know, thanks for like, asking so many questions. Like that was, you know, and that's what helped me a lot. Like being honest, asking questions, being like genuine of like, oh, hey, like I actually don't know about this at all. Like, can you tell me about this? Or like, hey, I'm feeling this. Like, you know, like um, that's really important. Being vulnerable too. In terms of like a technical skill, I think like every every CS student knows this, and uh, I'm bad at them, and I, but I use them a lot. I think every uses them a lot is like leak code and like coder pad, like those questions. Yeah, Audi immediately. I think he typed it before I said it. Uh, leak code is like every company will ask you some sort of question that's probably built on leak code. Yeah, software engineers use leak code exactly. Yeah, or like coder pad, which is like I like coder pad more personally. If anyone from Lee Codes watch this, I'm sorry. But um, like that's definitely like as a as a software engineer, like, you know, like we like we're gonna we're gonna be test first our our like our technical skills. So I think doing leak code, doing questions like that, leak code, coder pad, um, hacker rank was an early one I used too. Um just gotta, you know, that's the that's the grind part of the interviews is just gotta got grind set some time to grind a little bit for leak code. Um it is a, you know, every, no matter what level you are, you're going to be asked up from like similar questions to that. Um, and even if like, even also once you get a job, like if you're comfortable, um, I think it's still good to brush up. Like, okay, can I still do this? Cause I'll be honest, there's some questions like I think I could do in college that I can't do now. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm rusty. Like, oh my gosh. So like, yeah, that's definitely in terms of a technical skill, code and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, I, I have to plus one that. I would just say do leak code consistently um, because you have to keep your skills sharp. Uh, you will forget things over time if you don't consistently do leak code. For the soft skills in the interview, uh, I would just say like act interested, be engaged, ask questions about the team, ask questions about the work, ask questions about the product. You kind of want to like reverse interview them during the interview because half of it is like figuring out if the company is right for you because it might not be. Um, so you wanna ask questions about the product. You can ask about like what your interview, you can ask the interviewer, what do you love? What do you hate? What would you change? Um, how is work-life balance? I think that's super important. And you can ask them about like, what are some of the limiting factors in terms of like development on the team? Um, and I have some notes here. You could even ask about people turnover if you really want. You could ask, you could have them spill tea. Uh, if they're open to it. And I guess for the technical stuff, before you start coding, you want to sort of gather the acceptance criteria. So that means like asking questions about the problem, really just showing that you understand the problem and giving examples of like input and output. Like if I, if I input X, what should, is this the Y that I should receive? Or is this the Y that I should see? Um, and you can sort of gauge if you're on the right path with the interviewer based on their responses. And that's an approach that um, really helps because it's it's good to sort of understand the problem before you start coding. And before you start coding, you wanna start with pseudocode. Uh, I don't know if you can do that now because most of your users are online and you kind of have to compile your code right away. Uh, so that you know, might give you a, a bit of a trouble, some area that, that might be a bit troublesome um, for you just because uh, normally when I do the interviews, I, they're on whiteboards. And so I can just sort of write down the code with a marker as opposed to typing it out. Uh, and I guess some other things talk about edge cases. And when you finally go on to the real code, think about ways you can optimize it after you've written it and end your interview by giving complexity. And I know we learned a lot about that here at UCSC. Um, and to add on to that, um, uh, I was a BME major, but I work within tech um, and I work with developers. Uh, so on, uh, for me, I don't come from a technical background. I don't code or anything, but um, working in two different positions, like being a consultant and being a program manager, 
um, there are two different aspects to the technical side. So you can either go the functional route or you can either go the technical route, which is what Eddie and Drew had mentioned. On the functional route is what I'm more focused on where uh, we have an application and we know what the application can do. And if we need to extend the um, uh, application, like let's say, for example, Facebook, uh, let's pretend that Facebook doesn't allow phone calls, right? Or something like that. So if Facebook doesn't allow phone calls, um, I know that it can send chat messages or something, then I would you know, reach out to somebody who's technical and ask them to build that piece of it. Um, so there are different ways that you guys can approach um, different roles within tech. And there are business positions within tech that you guys can also uh, choose to do as well. So if it's um, improving business processes within um, a, uh, a tech company, um, that's also another route that you guys can look to take. I love all of their interview tips, especially in the soft skills. Um, having been someone in HR and having to conduct literally hundreds of interviews, um, I will give you guys the real real and what I'm looking for when I'm talking to any candidate. Um, I really am looking for like people who definitely came prepared. Um, it's very easy to tell because um, if I were in your position, right, looking for a job and I would really be doing the research behind who am I going to be talking to. Typically with a company, they're going to have a recruiter, right, be that first intro call. And let's say you kill it at that interview with the recruiter. That's pretty much like a get to know you, like what are you interested in? Um, kind of just like learning more about what you want to do, right? And if that resonates with the company and the role they're hiring for, they're going to push you on to the next interview panel, which is when you'll have like three to five different panelists to speak to. So I think this is more of my tactical approach. Once you get to that stage of going into the, the panel is do your research, ask the recruiter, you know, who will I be speaking to um, in this panel, looking them up on LinkedIn. And every panelist is going to have a specific section that they're focused on in what they're trying to get out of you, right? So I'll give you an example. Um, and I can only really speak from my HR example because that's the world I live in. But let's say I'm hiring someone for my team on the tech and ops team, right? And we'll typically have two other people at least um, interview for that position, uh, in interviewing on the panel for that position. So maybe it's someone on the benefits team that I am a very big partner with. And maybe it's one more person on the HR generalist team, right? Who, do, who does more of the day-to-day -day interactions with our employees. So that generalist is going to be looking for um, the person coming in to really be engaged on the employee focus side. Like, are they catering to the employees? Are their answers kind of accommodating that in terms of, you know, do they go out of their way above and beyond to really give a great employee experience? Whereas me, if I'm searching for someone on the tech and ops team, I'm more systematic focused, right? Like, do they have structure behind their process when they are giving their answers? Are they thinking more about efficiency and scaling and thinking long-term solutions, right? So every person that's interviewing you is going to have a specific focus. And when your research on your panelists comes in, you can really touch on their areas and really highlight what their focus is on so that they'll think like, oh my gosh, this person is exactly what I'm looking for. Like they know, how, they would know how to work with me, right? Um, I do feel like when I was in college, I came from the approach of, okay, here are all my scenarios and I need to somehow like give the same story, but in different ways to these different people. Um, over time, I've really learned that it's, I would start from like the interviewer themselves, figuring out what area they live in and then kind of tweaking towards that. So that would be my biggest tip in at least what I look for when I'm interviewing people. I love all these tips. Um, I just also wanted to add into is like kind of what we were mentioning is you aren't, I know interviewing can be so nerve wracking and you know, we're all gonna have bad interviews one day, right? But really take this, like if you get rejected, it's not rejection, it's redirecting you to something better. Like trust me when I say that because you're not gonna be good right off the start, right? Interviewing is definitely, I think a skill set, and you know, interviewers wanna hire those that they feel like 
this person could be my teammate. So don't feel like you have to be so professional. Like I had this one interview and I can remember it to this day because um, I think it's something that helped me become a better interviewee is I was watching on YouTube all these like career coaching videos and like how to be professional. And I had this one girl call me out and just stopped me like from chatting and was like, I can tell you rehearse this. And in my mind, you're like, oh my gosh, like, what? Wait, what do you mean rehearse? Like, I thought this is what you wanted from me. And what I realized is I was missing my whole personality. I was missing why this person should hire me. Like, what makes me different from somebody else, right? Like, deep down, all of us can be professional, right? But the difference is like who you are, who's your character, your team, like, are you a team player? And so that's just super, that's something super important to remember is bringing your, bring in yourself, like bring in your personality. Like, again, maybe like a team, it doesn't feel like it's the right team, right? Like maybe you and this manager, this interview is not connecting. Like, don't take that as like, I will never work at this company, right? That just means that team wasn't for you. And I guarantee you there's a team in that company. If that company is your so-called, you know, desire that you want to go to their mission, like you're going to find the right team fit. So it's all about just Trust me when I say you're going to go through it. It's definitely, it can be like hurdles, but just remember to, I think through in, each interview, remember like why you're interviewing for this like role, like what, what intrigues you, right? Because like for me, I look for passion. Like my current manager, she, when she chatted me, um, even though I didn't have all like the minimal qualifications for this role, the reason why she told me she hired me was because my passion for talent, my passion to want to dive deeper into this realm. So trust me when I say like, there are people who will see that. So passion over the company and like, you know, um, where I was going with this, you know, I think a lot of times students go with, oh, I want this company. And especially when I did coffee chats, they all be like, I want to work at Facebook. I want to work at Google. I want to work at Amazon. Right. And I'll ask them, okay, what do you want to do there? And they can't tell me why. So remember that when you're doing interviews, it's yes, there's the company, but also what is your mission? What do you want to do at this company? What's the impact you want to take, right. Or make in it. But yeah, that's just a little bit of my interview tips that I would get. <laughs> I love all of this so much. Plus one to literally everything that all of you said. Um, I do want to finish this one off by saying that don't be afraid to reach out to your recruiter to ask questions um, prior to your interviews. And I think this is an important one because I feel like a lot of the times candidates might be kind of nervous to talk to their recruiters and unsure of like what's okay, what's not okay. Um, but coming from recruiting, and I think Sarah can speak to this as well, recruiters are on your side. They want you to get the job. It'll be good for them as well. Um, but yeah, just like feel free to reach out to them ahead of time and they are there to help you. Um, but moving on to our next question. Um, how have you all deal, dealt with imposter syndrome? And this can be in your current role, in a previous role, um, or throughout your experience in college. Well, I feel very passionate about this one, so I'll kick off. Um, I will speak about my experience going into Robinhood because I feel like I'm a very like confident person. Like over the years, I or I guess growing up, I was definitely not confident. I was like so insecure, so unsure of myself, but over time um, getting more experience and just um, you know going through job rejections and learning how to like bring myself back up from that. Like I really do feel like I've built the confidence for myself, but no matter what, like even if you're a, a genuinely like confident person, there are going to be moments where you don't feel so sure about yourself, right? Or like you question and doubt your abilities, especially when you compare yourself to others. And I absolutely felt that way when I was going into my interviews at Robin Hood, because of course the thing you're doing is like, you're looking up the interview pa panel, right? And every single person on my panel came from an Ivy League school. And immediately I was like, oh my God, why are they even talking to me coming from, you know, being, being a, a person from Santa Cruz? Um, and I quickly had to shut out that thought because if I had gone into that interview with that mindset, I feel like they absolutely would have seen that, right? Like this person is unsure and like we question her abilities and all of that, but I, you know, really had to work, um, and tell myself like, 
they're interviewing me for a reason. Um, there's something that stuck out to them about my profile and about me as a person where they're inviting me over to like have a chat with them, right? So my biggest thing about imposter syndrome is um, like, don't let it paralyze you. Like I, I know every single person is going to have this feeling, but just don't let that stop you from whatever it is you're trying to achieve. You know, fake it till you make it. That was like my biggest motto when I was growing up in middle school and high school and college. I was like, oh my God, just fake it till you make it. And I literally faked it until I believed in myself. And I was like, wow, I am confident. I am beautiful. Like I am all these things. And I actually believe it now, right? But at the time, I absolutely did not feel that way. Um, so I will say like, just appreciate yourself for the diversity that you bring, the background that you have. Like, I think Sarah touched on this a little earlier. We are all such unique people and we all bring a certain skill set and thought process and the way that we function. Like there's, it's, there's something special about that, right? And when someone is interviewing you or talking to you, like they're talking to you for a reason and they wanna understand your story because you know that diversity matters when you bring it into a company and you're able to share like from a non-target school, what do people experience, right? Because all those Ivy Leaguers, like they all have the similar experience and are probably privileged and I'm making a lot of assumptions right now, but you know, they all are pretty like homogenous, right? So like, that's why they're bringing in people from UC Santa Cruz to talk to, or like from all these different areas and backgrounds. So just have faith in yourself. And if you do not fake it till you make it until you believe it. Oh, Jude, did you want to say something? Oh yeah, I was trying, I was trying to think, I was like trying to think like, okay, like, no, 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 you're good. You're totally good. That's my bad. But no, I like, totally agree. Like I'm also really passionate about this Lucy. So thanks for, thanks for starting this off. Um, I like the whole, like, yeah, I fake it till you make it such a very, it's a very good motto. Cause like, once you fake it, once you like fake it enough, we get to a point where you're like, you know what? I'm here, you know, it can't be all faking the whole time. So, you know, and like build that confidence is really important. Um, but yeah, like this is a really important, like, I also like really like am passionate about this too, because like I still have imposter syndrome, like at my job, which you know, I felt very comfortable at, at Viva. Like I, I like love my team. I love my boss. I love um, just like my like QA is cool. My my other my other developers are cool. Um, but even then I'm like, you know what? Wow, I'm having a rough time this like last few weeks. Um, not right, right now, but like a few, like a few months ago, actually I was having a pretty hard time. I was kind of stuck on this one task and like, I kind of got in my head and I was like, God, this, am I bad? Do I suck? Like, what is going on? And like, and like, like the whole imposter syndrome, like, wow, maybe I'm not, maybe I'm actually like not doing that well. And like the first step, I think for me, at least, like, this is all just me. Like, um, this is just how I got through it and got through stuff is like kind of, it, it, it's good to, it, it's good to validate yourself in terms of like, okay, my feelings are valid. Like I'm having a rough time right now. Like, this is, this is valid. Um, you know, I'm sad. I'm, you know, I'm frustrated. I'm like, why can't I get this done? Um, but yeah, first validate yourself. Like, hey, you're not, you're not crazy. You're not, you're not less of anyone for thinking for going down. Um, this is for everything too. Validation is very important. Um, also Sarah mentioned in the chat, uh, words of affirmation. That is, that is my love language. So I'm, I need that. Sometimes I need validation. Um, but yeah, so like I was feeling a foster syndrome. I was like, God, I'm, not doing well, what can I do next? And honestly, what helped me a lot, and it's like, maybe it's like, if you're if you're still interviewing, you're feeling imposter syndrome, if you get the job, it's you're feeling imposter syndrome. Like, honestly, I was, I talked to, I talked to my boss and I told him, I was like, hey, I don't want to touch his name. I'll say, hey, boss, um, I'm honestly, I'm having a really bad time. Like, this is not good. I'm not doing well. Or like, I feel like I'm not doing well. And, you know, he taught, he's like, okay, hey, thanks for being honest. Cause like, you know, a lot of us are scared. To, a lot of us are scared to like kind of be honest. I kind of mentioned this earlier, but I actually personally value honesty a lot. And just like being upfront and like, you know, again, it's always good to show face. It's always good to like, you know, be confident. But confidence is hard. And like, just like really validate, validate yourself and tell someone like, hey, I'm doing not good. Like, what do you think I should do? And sometimes they'll be like, hey, no, you are doing good. And even that, you know, that, that reassurance, that validation feels really good. It's like, you know, I am good. 
and you know you know when you if you take it to make it enough like lucy said like you'll I mean, you'll get is a 12 for 12 um american i mean uh, california time uh yeah okay. uh good. <laughs> was that okay that was that i thought that was i thought that was like my browser i was like what's going on um um but yeah uh how's it going yeah, so like fake it till you make it because it's really important. It's like, because you have to realize eventually, you know, getting reassurance from other people, it's like, yeah, it's like, it's valid. If you want reassurance, like, it's really bad. Like, we, we need, we need some love. Um, but yeah, there's a point where you have like, you know, I'm here. I can do it. I got to where I am. You know, I got through college. I got through, I got through this one class. I got through this job. Like, we are here for a reason. And like, you know, you only confidence is like really hard. It's hard. Like, I still struggle. Like, you know, I struggle all the time. Um, but yeah, like it's 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 a tough one. It's 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 a, it's definitely a, a really hard thing to get over it. But like really validate yourself, ask for help, you know, and just know that you've done it. You can do more. You'll do. There's gonna be things in life that's gonna be way harder. There's gonna be things in life that are way easier. So it's like you know, just just do do what you can because you'll you'll get you'll get you'll get there. You'll get somewhere. You'll get to where you want to be even though it feels really bad right now, or it might be. But yeah, I kind of rambled <laughs> at the end. And I completely agree with um, Drew, like even starting a new company and starting new in, in a new team or new technology, um, you'll always have imposter syndrome because you'll meet so many people who are so good at what they do. And you're just like, um, kind of like a little baby, just um, just learning how to navigate through um, the company or your new team. Uh, so imposter syndrome will always be there. Like at work, I um, I work with mostly male um, on my teams, and uh, even sometimes, like I feel like um, it's hard to uh, voice um, why I want to. But since um, I am in a program management role, um, you know, I would have to drive those conversations and you kind of get to a point where you just, you just do it. Um, and the more and more you do it, it's like the more you practice and the more you learn to be more confident, um, just like what uh, Lucy said. So just knowing that you guys are here on a Thursday um, afternoon just shows a lot that you guys are interested in, you know, learning more about this and growing from where you guys are now. So definitely props to all of you guys to, for taking the next step. There, I saw you unmuted. Sorry. I know, go ahead. No, you go first. <laughs> it was so, <laughs> so this is probably one of the most important questions, I think, in this panel. I When I saw the question list, I was like, yeah, this is probably going to be a really good question. Um, so I have felt imposter syndrome, but I can't say that I felt it due to the fact that I went to an off-target school. Um, for me, it was like the hardest thing was like finding a job that I thought I was worth uh, pursuing. Um, and so some of the things that I did was just keep grinding and grinding and grinding until I finally get that job offer. I think I applied to like over a hundred companies. And at the end of the day, it didn't matter because I finally got that one yes after those 100 no's that I, that I ended up getting. And um, that's, that's something that uh, is, is it's, it's going to be there. You're always going to get rejected. Um, but if you can sort of accept that and move on past it and just focus on that the end goal that you're going towards, I think it'll help you a lot. Yeah, no, definitely. I just kind of want to add to like, I know it can be like from Andre, like graduating is one thing and getting interview is another, but I think the practices are the same, right? Like you, right, when we were applying to universities, do you know how many schools that like we got like maybe rejected to or we thought like our top dream school i'm not gonna lie to y'all uc santa cruz was not my top tier like my dream number one school but would i pass it up for the world no i loved what i made of it right and that it's that mindset to kind of bounce back from when things don't happen so i think interviewing like you are going to get an interview you just have to keep in a sense keep going and like finding that value you can bring and like 
finding that one yes. I know it sounds so cheesy and maybe I'm just too much of an optimistic person, but I really do believe in each one of us. There's a value you guys hold and like we're small, like we're banana slugs, but we're mighty. So like, remember that there's so many amazing banana slugs doing amazing things. And like, there's so much ways that you can network and go out, right? So imposter syndrome, it's, you know, I feel it a lot, like even at where I am in my career, like I feel like I'm doing really well, but I also get a lot of imposter syndrome as well. And that's completely fine. You know, we're all human, but I think one thing that I would love for you guys to do um, and something that I do, um, I'm exposing myself is I'll look in the mirror and I'll just like tell myself like, wow, Sarah, you're doing a great job you know, or I'll have, um, where's my book? Okay. It's somewhere in my room, but I have like a gratitude book and it sounds so cheesy, right. To write this out. Like I'm grateful for this, but you know, when you put it into words and writing, I'm a really big believer in manifestation, but when you put it into writing, there's something about it where kind of like what Lucy was saying, you fake it to make it, but you fake it until you believe it right? Because there's a reason why these companies hired you. There's a reason why you're interviewing. There's a reason why you're able to, you know, pass all these classes, keep on going, you know, you have something. So just try not to lose sight of that. You know, I think if you never give up on yourself, like you're going to just go, you're going to keep going. So don't listen to people who say you can't do this. You can't do that. You know, I've gotten too many times people telling me I'm too young. I can't ever get into these roles. And, you know, I didn't listen to that. I listened to people who wanted to chat with me and believed in me. So, you know, re rejection is just another way to say re redirection. But more importantly, don't put all that time towards people who don't believe in you. Put it into surrounding yourself with people who want to support you. Yeah. Love yeah. all of this. Um, and yeah, definitely important to believe in yourself. And just want to mention that it is very normal to feel imposter syndrome and feel not confident, especially when you're stepping into a new space. Um, like even right now, I've been at my company for almost two years and I'm still feeling imposter syndrome. I feel like I'm surrounded by really, really bright, intelligent people all the time. And sometimes I feel like I'm not, you know, I'm kind of inadequate or I don't know as much as other people around me do. But I think it's also great to note that like when you feel uncomfortable that's how you grow and that's how you learn um so just like continue learning growing and believing believing in yourself and you will get to that point um, of like where you want to be and then i think just so that everyone like um because we're at five and we want to be respectful of everyone's time um i think that was our last question but before we go i just want to give a huge thank you to our amazing panelists like for taking this time just to chat and share you guys a story you guys are absolutely amazing yeah class woohoo <laughs> and then secondly a huge thanks to our audience as Fang was saying like you guys are putting yourselves out there. You're doing more than what other people who are not here on a Thursday listening, right? Um, so feel free to add us on LinkedIn. Um, we're all super happy to connect. I'm going to put this word of advice, um, if you haven't already, is when you add us on LinkedIn, go to connect. You want to go on your computer, go to connect and put add a personalized note. Um, this is your guys' homework. Um, I'm not going to connect with you all if you don't add, if you don't send a personalized note, but this is a good way to just teach you guys of like, when you're connecting with someone who's like a stranger and adding something genuine on why you want to connect with them, I guarantee you 90% of the time that you're going to have a lot higher uh, acceptance or a lot higher with people wanting to chat. So um, feel free to find us on LinkedIn. Um, we won't make it too hard. Um, do you guys all want to drop your LinkedIn's down in the chat below? Oh, never mind. Thank you so much to, to oh, who did that? Oh, Taylor. take me a ball. Taylor. Taylor, Taylor's too good, y'all. But um, yeah, feel free to add us on LinkedIn um, and just write about like you can say anything. You can say, hi, I joined this panel or you can even write about like, I loved what you said about this, um, but just make it personalized. Um, but we hope you guys enjoyed this and we're always open to feedback. But thank you all for joining us on this lovely Thursday evening. Thanks, everyone.